welcome to this tutorial in which we are going to look at basic hand tracking with some very simple finger interaction. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the scene that I'm starting with. It's the basic scene and I'm using the same setup as I've shown in my previous Quest 3 videos for both the setup and the UI um, scene. So you can see I've got the directional light which I've currently minimised. I've got a plane for the ground. I've got a cube that's acting as a simple table. I've got a box that's going to act as a switch. I've got this sphere that is just there to pretend it's a light bulb and I've actually got a point light that is illuminating the scene. Now the other thing to be to point at this point is in my little box is I've set it to be a box collider and I've told it to be a trigger. I've also added a rigid body. I'm not sure if I need that at the moment but I have put it on and I have said this is kinematic so therefore it's, it's not going to try and fall. It's not actually solid but it will react to us physically pressing it. And I've also added an empty script called touch me for the moment. So when we touch this, it's going to have an action, which in this case will be, it'll turn the light on and off, which I think could be quite useful in a game, but could be led to also opening doors, pushing buttons, etc. Okay, so the first step is we need to add our, our XR camera rig. So I'm gonna come down to the XR core, into our prefabs, and I'm gonna drag on the uh, camera rig, making sure this is at zero, zero coordinates. So it's just in front of the box, there it is. Um, I'm going to expand till I can see the left and right hand and I'm going to drag on the left hand prefab onto the anchor. I'm going to add the right hand anchor across. Um, yep, that's fine. Uh, just one step before I go any further, I'm coming back to OVR camera rig. I'm coming down here. I'm going to say this is to be floor level and I'm also going to make sure that it is tracking controllers and hands. Otherwise, even if you wave your hands in front of it, if it's on controllers only, it won't do anything. Okay, so as I click on the left hand, just making sure it does say left hand. Yes, it does, the hand left, yep. I'm gonna press auto map bones. Uh, this makes sure that it actually figures, puts bones into this asset. So as you're wiggling your fingers in front of the camera, your hands will physically move. And I'm gonna demonstrate that now by only doing it on the left hand. So if I now press run, Okay, we can see I've got my left hand's working just fine, but my right hand is just nothing. It's not attached to my fingertips, but we can fix that really easily. I'm just going to click back on the right hand, where I'm just going to say auto map bones. So now we've got moving hands. Now there's also this little button just here that lets us enable physic, physics capsules. Now when I tried this a couple of years ago, I really wasn't happy with the workflow, but if you want to, by all means, you're going to study the sample SDKs and have a look. And if you're happy with it, go for it. But I'm just going to go with the method that has worked for me. Um, so I'm going to click on the right hand, zoom right in. I'm going to expand on this. So I'm going to keep on expanding uh, index finger, index, index, until I know if I click on, oops, zoomed right out again. Let's zoom back in. But you can see it's linking it to the actual bones. So obviously we've got the base of the index finger, middle of the index finger and the end of the index finger. So what I want to do is on the index null, I mean, it doesn't really matter whether it's there or there, I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a sphere. So if I just add a little sphere there, now this sphere is too big to see. Uh, so if, in fact, if I zoom out, oops, I've tried to change the name of it, don't want to do that. And I've just deleted it. Clumsy clicking, clumsy clicking can cause all sorts of problems. Um, so if I just press F to find the item, there we go, it's way too big. So I'm going to lock the, anchor, the, the, the padlock thing. I'm going to say 0.05, because I think that's about the right size. Press F again, can zoom right in. It's still too big, but that's fine, because now I can see it. I can shrink it down manually. So I want this to be on the, on the tip of the finger itself. So I'm just going to bring this out a little bit. And because I've stuck it there, it's parented to the actual tip of the finger. Um, and on this sphere, it's got a sphere collider, good. Um, I, I think I can leave these alone for the moment. It will be solid, so I could cause problems later and what I want to do is tag it. So if you go on to add tag, obviously you can press the plus button and write a new tag in. Um, I've already done that so I've called it right index. The key thing to do though is not to forget to then actually tag the item which a lot of, well I do it a lot, so it still says untagged so I'm going to choose right index. So it's now got a tag attached. I'm just going to make sure that this is working so I'm going to press play. I want to make sure that it is parented to my fingertip. Okay, so there you can see it's moving with my fingertip. So yep, happy to sort of continue using that, but again, still nothing working just yet. Okay, so um, I'm gonna stop playing. Remember to always press stop, otherwise it doesn't save any change to your code. So I've got the sphere, I could rename that, and I do like to sort of just put call at the end, I should really name it properly, like 
um, right index call for collision. So if I want to find my collision spheres later, I can find them quite easily from up there. Okay, so um, as I mentioned earlier, I've already got a box on the table and it's already got a script called touch me. So if we just nip into that code, I'm going to come to the very top and just say public uh, light. I'm just going to call it light one. Uh, I'm going to come down into my large well, below update, but I'm going to say on trigger enter. So it's finished off the rest of the code for me, which I do like. And now I can just go if other dot game object dot tag equal equals the right index, then I want to turn the light on. So I can just say uh, light one enabled equals true. But I actually do want to do something a bit more clever than that. What if the light is already on? So I want to say if light one dot enabled equal equals oops I missed equals true then turn it on and of course if it's already on then I want to turn it off so I can just go else light one dot enabled equals false so there we go so it'll should turn on and off um, only if the right index finger is touching it now again I'm doing this because I'm right-handed if you're left-handed and want to use your left hand then of course feel free to change that to left um, and of course make sure you put the collision detection on the other hand instead and I'm just going to press save because we should always press save fairly regularly um, but now did I save that code no I did not because it's a little asterisk so I'm just going to press ctrl s to save knit back into unity and what we should have now got is oops I've missed, a, missed something missed a bracket let's go back that seems like a simple error ah there we go that was my clumsy typing again always these simple mistakes again if you get an error do have a quick read of the error messages they do they do quite help so again to press save come back into unity and even tell me what line number and where it was okay so hopefully now when I press this box it should turn the light on and off and it's not because I forgot to do one little thing because of my coding error, I forgot to drag the light across. So if I click back on my box, there it says light one, none. There is no light to turn on and off. Again, these are really simple mistakes that many of us make and we wonder why it's not working or because we forgot to do something really simple. And it's still not working. Okay, so a quick fix later. Um, you should probably never code while uh, talking to a camera, but I basically got my Boolean wrong. If the light is currently off then turn it on and if it's obviously if it's on then turn it off and I basically made a mistake with that that was set to true like I said I'm concentrating the camera instead well not the camera the recording so either way we can now save that as if it's off turn it on and of course if it was already on then turn it off so if we nip back into unity this should be our final test and this is how we got this basic interaction so now on the scene and the little finger and now there we go light on light off it doesn't matter if my hand stays in it uh, there we go only works when I turn it on and off so really good for doing switches you could obviously make a small keyboard and put a letter on each one and make it action just one more thing before I go um, if I do click on my hand I'm just going to come right back down to this collision obviously you don't need to be able to see that we can just simply turn the mesh renderer off so that we can't actually see the fingertip collider I just like to see it there while I'm working on things so I know things are actually working but of course turn it off right I shall leave that there now for part one and in part two we shall look at some basic gesture control so for example you know are you pointing at something are you holding something in your hand are you letting something go and again it'll be the same vein where it's some just very simple colliders on the fingertips so again if you found any part of this video please remember to like subscribe and I shall see you in the next video